Coming up on today's Broncos Breakdown, we'll check out the latest coaching hires as Denver has a new offensive coordinator with the new regime coming into town. Plus, Brian Flores, if you missed it, is suing the NFL and is including the Broncos in that lawsuit as well. And finally, the Broncos are officially up for sale. So get your piggy bank out, see if you can muster up about $4 billion. Yeah, it's with a B to try and be the next Broncos owner. To start the show, I want to ask this question, though. Who do you guys got in the Super Bowl? You got the Rams or the Bengals? I, 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 my, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I had a Super Bowl prediction. I said Rams, Bill. So I get like half credit. Uh, but I don't think anyone had the Bengals going all the way to the Supi. Probably not even Bengals fans. So let me know who you got in the Super Bowl. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday. So just spam your LAR for the Rams down below. Or if you got the Bengals, give me a CIN. Starting off today's show, we'll look at the latest coaching news, and Adam Schefter put this out not long ago, saying the Broncos hired former Packers tight end coach Justin Uten, Outen as their new offensive coordinator per source. So let's check out Justin, see what he's going to be like as the new, well, not quite play caller. That, will respond, that uh, duty will fall to Nathaniel Hackett, but overall the offensive coordinator. So he has been the Packers tight end coach since 2019, he coached for the Falcons from 2016 to 2018, a bit of an overlap with Matt LaFleur, so that's how he got the job in Green Bay. And his claim to fame is he had, was a tight end coach, and Robert Tunyon had that big breakout year. It's kind of like when you know an actor from just one movie. This is his one movie right now. It's Tunyon 2020. Guy came out of nowhere, put up 11 touchdowns. Tours ACL middle of the year this season back in that Thursday night game against the Cardinals on the road. Um, but that's his big claim to fame is Robert Tunyon breakout season. Other than that, not a ton out there on this guy. He's not going to be the play caller for the Broncos. Like I said, that's going to stay with Hackett. So he's just going to be a part of the offensive scheme day in, day out, getting ready for the upcoming game and checking out the opposing defense, what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are. So that's the new offensive coordinator for the Broncos. Luckily, the Pat Shermer days are done. You don't have to worry about his horrible offensive scheme and his play calling. Those days are, those days are behind us. The uh, Broncos also hired Clint Kubiak to be the next quarterback coach. He's the son of former Broncos head coach Gary Kubiak. He's been the Vikings offensive coordinator for all of one year after getting promoted, after working in their uh, organization for a little bit. He overlaps with the Broncos GM George Payton, and he's got some ties to the Denver area because he worked with the Broncos as their offensive assistant from 2016 to 2018. So those are the two latest hires for Nathaniel Hackett. He gets his OC, and Clint Kubiak comes over from Minnesota. Are you excited for this new regime, though? Are you pumped about it? Are you giving me an E for excited or just meh, meh? We'll get more notes on the new uh, hirings in just a second, but this is the pinned comment on today's show. So if a YouTube ad break comes on by, scroll on down, give me an E for excited, which I hope you are, or an M for meh. So looking at Kubiak and what he did with the Vikings offense last year, because we would talk about uh, Justin's offense in Green Bay, but he was a tight end coach, so that's not really fair to show the Packers' offense. You can't really attribute it to him. But Kubiak, offensive coordinator for just one year in Minnesota. Mike Zimmer gets canned. But those are the numbers right there, 25 points per game, all pretty much middle of the pack. Uh, our producer right now, Jackie, is the Vikings guy here at, at Chat Sports and. If you look at the Vikings' responses on Broncos' tweets about hiring this guy, they're pretty happy to lose him, but it's the NFL. You're not going to go out and hire the best quarterback coach. It just doesn't work that way. Usually those guys move up to offensive coordinators or the head coaches. So you take what you can get, and honestly, I like experience more than anything else. He's definitely learned a lot as one year as an OC in Minnesota. Hopefully he can learn from those mistakes he made and improve on them in Denver. Now, Brian Flores, probably the biggest news story right now uh, outside of the offensive coordinator hire for the Broncos. He is suing the NFL. There's a long lawsuit out there, a long um, packet you can read. It's all over Twitter. But he included the Broncos. So that's the part we're going to focus on today's show because he is alleging that the Broncos were never serious about hiring Brian Flores and they're just complying with the Rooney rule. And the Rooney rule is that NFL teams must interview two minority head coaches and they just viewed Brian Flores as checking a box basically and never actually were serious about bringing him on as a head coach. So here's what the lawsuit says uh, regarding the Denver Broncos. 
They look completely disheveled, and that is the Broncos head coach search team he's talking about. And it was obvious that they had been drinking heavily the night before. It was clear from the substance of the interview that Mr. Flores was interviewed only because of the Rooney Rule, and the Broncos never had any intention to consider him as a legitimate candidate for the job. He would go on to say, shortly thereafter, Vic Fangio, a white man, was hired to be the Broncos, uh, hired to be the head coach of the Broncos. So that's what Flores said. Here's the Broncos' official statement: the allegations from Brian Flores directed toward. The Broncos in today's court filing are blatantly false. Our interview with Mr. Flores regarding our head coaching position began promptly at the scheduled time of 7.30 a.m. on January 5, 2019 in a Providence, Rhode Island hotel. There were five Broncos executives present for the interview, which lasted approximately three and a half hours, the fully allotted time, and concluded shortly before 11 a.m. Pages of detailed notes, analysts, and evaluations from our interview demonstrate the depth of our conversation and sincere interest in Mr. Flores as a head coaching candidate. Our process was thorough and fair to determine the most qualified candidate for our head coaching position. The Broncos will vigorously defend the integrity and values of our organization and its employees from such baseless and disparaging claims. Broncos response to allegations. So that's the official statement right there. Uh, it's a big claim right now to go out and say the Broncos were never interested. There's a lot going on there because if that's true, there's going to be some serious repercussions for that. But the overall claim is that Joe Ellis and John Elway and the whole rest of the search crew went out drinking the night before maybe and came up a little hungover, some Irish flu, were late to the meeting for a head coach, and that's not a good thing if that's true. And here's what Mike Kliss tweeted. Out. He said, Brian Flores to ESPN. So let me backtrack a moment. Brian Flores hopped on ESPN this morning, being Wednesday morning, and talked about the allegations and the lawsuit. And he said, Brian Flores to ESPN had small laugh when stated, uh, when asked about Bronco's statement, saying the interview went promptly at 7.30 a.m. I deal with truth. That's my reaction. Honesty and integrity are important to me. Hopefully there's a day where we find out the truth on that one. It's tough to say, right? Uh, I wasn't in the room, so I'm not there. So I'm just going to wait for the facts to come out. I'm not going to hop on either side right now and say, no, person A is wrong or person B is wrong. But if the claims are true, yeah, that's pretty damning just because as an organization, you don't want your head coach uh, to be not even, or a potential head coach to not even seriously be considered because the search crew went out and got drunk in Rhode Island at the like, two bars they probably have in that small state, and never actually wanted to even talk to Brian Flores. They just wanted to check the Rooney Rule box. So we'll wait for the facts to come out, but those are the quotes right there. So do with that what you will. You got all the information right in front of you. Also, I want to tell you guys about our proud sportsbook partner today, BetUS. Go on over to chatsports.com slash bet. Plug in the promo code BRONCOS125, get 125% deposit bonus, and you can cash that deposit bonus in on a Super Bowl bet, for example. So if you like the Rams or you like the Bengals, make your bets right now at BetUS. Get started today, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code BRONCOS125. Next up on the Broncos Breakdown, the Broncos are officially up for sale. That's what I was talking about earlier, so... Get your money together, put your piggy bank together, and try to muster $4 billion. Because the Pat Bowen Trust announced on Tuesday that the team will be sold. There was some talk of one of Pat Bowen, the great late Pat Bowen, one of his daughters taking over. Instead, they're going to get just a couple hundred million dollars. Because the team's going to go for about $4 billion, probably north of that. And that'll be the largest sale of any NFL team in the history of the NFL. And the idea of the talk is, is it going to be Peyton Manning or is it going to be John Elway to be the next Broncos owner? So I want you guys to go ahead and pick an owner for me. You think it's going to be John Elway or you think it's going to be Peyton Manning? Give me a 7 for Elway or give me an 18 for Peyton Manning. Personally, I would take Peyton Manning. So give me Peyton Manning. Spam your 18s down below. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that big red button. Subscribe. If you are looking for Broncos news and rumors all off season long, then you have found the right place. So if this video has been something you've been looking for to keep up to date with the latest Broncos news and rumors, hit that big red button. Join the channel. And we'll catch you later here on the Broncos Breakdown.